please turn to Proverbs 1. Today is the first day of the month. There's 31 Proverbs. You can read one every day of the month. They never get old. How many YouTube channels do we have here in represented? It's a lot. All right. The Proverbs of Shlomo. That's Solomon. Son of Dawid, sovereign of Israel. For knowing wisdom and discipline, for understanding the words of understanding, for receiving the discipline of wisdom, righteousness, right ruling, and straightness. For giving insight to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. The wise one hears and increases learning, and the understanding one gets wise counsel. For understanding a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. These are words to make us wise. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. My son, heed the discipline of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother, for they are a fair wreath on your head and chains about your neck. Those are good chains, like gold chains, not chains like a slave chain. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and entirely like those going down to the pit. Let us find all precious goods. Let us fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot amongst us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed blood. For in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, but they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. Such are the ways of everyone greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. Man, there's a lot of wisdom right there about, we get it, don't go hang out with bad people. We understand that. But man, for people who are just greedy for gain, it overtakes them. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the broad places. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the openings of the gate in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and shall scoff as shall scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Turn at my reproof. We're here for this verse. We're going to continue the whole thing, though. See, I pour out my spirit on you. I make my words known to you. Because I called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one inclined, and you spurned all my counsel and would not yield to my reproof. Let me also laugh at your calamity. Mock when your dread comes. And when your dread comes like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Let them then call on me, but I will answer not. Let them seek me, but not find me, because they hated knowledge, and they, cho they did not choose to fear Yahweh. Mm -hmm. They did not accept my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, let them eat the fruit of their own way. Well, that doesn't sound very Christian, does it? And very forgiving. Mm -hmm. And be filled with their own counsels, for the turning away of the simple kills them, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whosoever listens to me dwells safely and is at ease from the dread of evil. Whosoever listens to wisdom. The reason I read the Proverbs, I try to read the Proverbs every day, whichever one applies. Um, but the reason we kind of read this whole one today is for verse 23, where it says, See, I pour out my spirit on you. I make my words known to you. Most of you have probably heard the story that I tell about the first time I ever spoke in tongues and I was fasting and I just felt his grace pouring down on me. And that was before I knew this kind of concept. It felt like water pouring down on me. It felt like the most perfect temperature water of the perfect pressure just flowing down over me. The Holy Spirit is referred to and is thought of, especially by the Israelites, as water from heaven pouring down on them, pouring down from above. With that in mind, please turn to John chapter 7.
John chapter 7, verse 37. And on the last day, the great day of the festival, Yeshua stood and he cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and let him who believes in me drink. This was on the last day, on the great day of the festival of Sukkot. Sukkot. It was on a day like today, so many years ago. And Yeshua rose up from the crowd and yelled those words, spoke them very loudly. It says cried. Um, he spoke them loudly. So Sukkot, tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, it's also called the ingathering because people from Israel would all come together and also the harvest is being ingathered. So here's what was going on to kind of put this part of what Yeshua is saying in John 37 in context. During the Feast of Sukkot that we're basically finishing up now, during the seven days of Sukkot, the priests from the temple every morning would have this parade, this procession where they'd all go down together to the pool of Siloam. Siloam, right? They would go down there and they had these big pitchers and they would fill these pitchers with water and then they'd come hoofing these things back up all the steps from the pool of Siloam and all the people were gathered there and they were anticipating these guys coming up with the water because it was uh, indicative, it was pointing towards um, commemorating a promise, a promise of Yah to the people. And they all knew this. And to understand that promise, let's go to Isaiah. Yes, Yahoo. Isaiah chapter 12. Now they were familiar with Isaiah. They heard it a lot. They talked about it a lot. Yeshua even read from Isaiah. We talked about that the other day. Here's what they were thinking about when these priests are bringing the water up. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 1. And in that day you shall say, I thank you, Yahweh, though you were enraged at me. Your displeasure has turned back and you have comforted me. See, El is my deliverance. I trust and am not afraid. For Yah, Yahweh, is my strength and my song. He has become my deliverance. And you shall draw water with joy from the fountains of deliverance. And in that day you shall say, Praise Yahweh, hallelujah, and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. So, as the priests closed in on the temple with these big jugs of water, the people were all gathered together and they sang the psalms. And they sang special psalms on these seven days. And I want you to turn there, please, to Psalm 113. They sang psalms one, what we call Psalms 113 through 118. They sang that as the priests were coming up. And we are not going to read, even though they're fairly short, we're not going to read all of Psalms 113 through 118. But please understand, as the priests are having their priestly procession, they went down, they're coming up, everyone's really excited, they're, they're full of happiness and joy, and so they're singing Psalms 113 and 118, and I just, they're called the Halal Psalm, Halal Psalms. I just want to bring out a couple little points as we go through. In Psalm 113, uh, verse 2, let me find it. Blessed be the name of Yahweh, now and forever. Now understand they were singing these psalms every day. right? Yeshua stood up at the end of seven days of them doing this stuff every day. And so they're saying, blessed be the name of Yahweh, now and forever. Um, that's kind of a key verse in there. In Psalm uh, 114, look at verse 8 who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. So they're talking about when Yah, when through Moshe, gave the people water, and water is representative of the Holy Spirit. Water flows down from above. Yah is providing this water from above. He's in heaven, we're below. And so the rock to the pool of water, the flint to the fountain. In 115, two different verses. Verse uh, 2, Why should the nation say, Where now is their Elohim? 
where is their God? And then in verse 18, we bless, we praise Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So there's people questioning who their God is, who their Elohim is, and then we bless, we praise Yah. In verse in, uh, 117, it's very short. Praise Yah. Praise Yahweh. So these are the thoughts that are going through their heads every morning. And then in uh, 118, let's see, verse 16. The right hand of Yahweh is exalted. The right hand of Yahweh acts mightily. Who's the right hand of Yahweh? Yeshua. Yeshua, right? We know that. And then in 28, uh, 27. Let's look at 27. The stone which the, uh, it's 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was from Yahweh. And then in 28, you are my El. I praise you. You are my Elohim. I exalt you. And so as they're singing these psalms, the priests get to the top of the steps with these big pitchers of water, and they start pouring the water out. And the crowd goes wild. <sighs> I mean, it, basically, their version of doing that, they did. They were really excited about that. They're singing these psalms, and, and I just brought little things to your mind that they're doing. But it's reminding them, this water that they're pouring out is reminding them of the provision Yah gave them when they came out of the desert. Remember, Sukkot brings us to mind of the Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we talked about the other day. Well, big part of the Exodus is the water, right? The water that the people drank. They're thirsty. We're dying of thirst. Why did you bring us out here in the desert to die of thirst? You know, and then why did Moshe not get to go to the promised land? Because he struck the rock, and Yah said, speak to the rock, and he did that, right? So water is a big deal with Sukkot. People are remembering it. And so they're pouring this water out as like a, as a, a, a fulfilled promise from Yah that he would provide for them. And then one day, this is the anticipation, they are anticipating that one day Yah will pour from heaven the metaphorical water, if you will, to provide Israel with a Messiah, this is what they're thinking. They're thinking, cool, he gave us water, he fulfilled his promise, and someday our Messiah is going to come. Mm. On the eighth day, the great day, there's no parade. There's no pouring of water at that time. And what that symbolizes is that Yahweh has fulfilled his promise to bring Israel into the well-watered promised land. So it's like, all right, we've anticipated it, we've seen it, he's provided it, and now we're here in Israel. And so on the eighth day, that's kind of the lesson they took from it, and they no longer need the miracle of water. It was on this day, in this context, when everybody is thinking these thoughts, everybody knows there's no hidden meaning here. It's like for some of you, you're like hearing this for the first time, but for these people, they knew that this is the story. This is why we do this. Da, 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 da. This means this, this means this. And all the kids are happy because everybody else is happy and they know that. And it was in that context that Yeshua stood up. And if you go back to John 7, John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last day, the great day of the festival, Yeshua stood up stood and he cried out saying if anyone thirsts now they're all thirsting they're thirsting for the water to come down metaphorically for messiah to appear if anyone thirsts let him come to me and let him who believes in me drink they were all singing those songs for seven days about yeshua and about the messiah and about yah blessing them and the scriptures as the scripture said out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living water this is the context that Yeshua is standing up on, this, on the eighth day, the great day of the Feast of Sukkot. The stone that the builders rejected. They were singing that every day. This is who is standing in front of them. And they're about to reject the stone in, in relatively short order from when he's doing this. Not, you know, not too much longer in the big scheme of things. So Yeshua, the promised Messiah, Yeshua, the hoped-for Savior, the, the anticipated Savior that is coming to Israel, Yeshua, the uh, Redeemer, the expected Redeemer for Israel, he's standing in their midst, mm -hmm. and he is fulfilling the scripture that they're all talking about, that they're all singing about, that they're all enacting with the actions of the priests. And they didn't even recognize him. All they did was get irritated at this guy standing up. Shut up, man. We're, we're doing our thing. 
they failed to recognize him as Messiah. Yeshua, our Redeemer, has come. He's already come. Yeshua, our Savior, is going to return. And Yeshua, the most anointed, the anointed of Yah, is the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. The bridegroom is coming. I just told a story yesterday. The bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. Mm -hmm. He's coming. That's what we can anticipate from this. Because Sukkot is when we spend the millennial reign with Yeshua here on earth. That's what it's pointing towards. We know that's happened. We recognize who and what he is and was. Yeshua is returning for his bride. I pray that all y'all's lamps are full of oil. I pray that all of us are found worthy of the king because the king is coming. Let's pray.